we've got someone good. Oh, very, very good, Bobby. Be a superstar. <laughs> oh. Hi, boys. Thanks, Kev. Our first guest this evening, one of Carlton's greatest football players, Mark McClure. Hi, Mark. Oh, Mark. Good Thank you very much. Yes, one of the greats from the Carlton Football Club. Yeah. Mark, how was it that a young boy from Sydney came down to play with Carlton? I was pretty lucky, really. I, uh, Bert Deacon uh, found out about me somehow. I don't know how, but... Uh, Where were you playing? East Sydney, at Trumper Park. At Trump how many How many were in the competition? Eight teams. And, and did you win all the time? Did you beat them all the time on your own or what? No, happened? no. I was 16 years of age and uh, I was sort of pretty lucky. I played in the seniors. And, Why uh, didn't you play rugby? I did. Played rugby league on Saturdays, Aussie Rules Sundays, and Wednesdays at school we'd play rugby union. It was a, a fair yeah, recruiting heavens. coup, wasn't it? Because, I mean, Bert Deacon was a champion Carlton player and a Brownlow medalist, and yep. he, was a, he was a great club man and secretary. But we're talking about 1974 when no players came out of Sydney. Now, you must have been just about the first player to come out of New South Wales, particularly from Sydney. Um, play AFL I football. probably was. I probably, I, I think I was. I, I, there may have been others, but... Uh, did I you mean, actually live in Sydney, mate? Yeah, I lived at Coogee. Oh, could you? Yeah, down the beach, and uh, it was fantastic. Used to wag school a bit and uh, get in there have a surf. And <laughs> <laughs> did, you follow, mate? did you follow the uh, VFL back in those days? Did you follow a club at all? I really didn't follow anyone because we didn't get much coverage. No, now it's an uh, overdose of coverage, but uh, we, we didn't get much coverage. We'd watch it sometimes on a Saturday afternoon, and, uh, uh, and I'd sort of look at it and sort of thought it was miles away and mm. never touchable, and just sort of happened. Was you know? Melbourne a culture shock for you and the football even more? It was when I first came down because yeah. I didn't wear too many jumpers and I arrived in June, that June 30th draft and I was 17 when I arrived and playing in the under 19s and they got me on June 30, like June 30 was pretty cool. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and I, had, you know, I just never used to wear socks and all that sort of stuff, you know, in those days and uh, thongs and uh, all those sorts of things and uh, I just didn't have the equipment. The coats and the jackets and the jumpers and uh, all those sorts of things, but I soon got them. Had you ever heard of, say, John Nichols, who was the coach of Carlton at the time? Well, I didn't. I actually heard of him, and I heard of Sid Jackson because he was a sort of different colour. But because yeah. uh, I could way, see that yeah. on television, yeah. that's not a rude thing to say. <laughs> no, but uh, those sorts of things, and I'd seen, heard of Jezelenko, of course, because he was just huge. And, uh, and then I walked into the rooms, and I actually saw John Nichols' legs, and I couldn't believe anyone could have legs like that in the life. You must have seen. Yeah, yeah. huge it was, man. It was incredible, wasn't it? Just incredible. Like an oak tree, wasn't he? Oh. Massive. Did it take you long to break into the big test? Well, I started 73, June 73, I arrived and uh, I played five games in the under-19s. Yeah. Uh, and then I played four games at the end of the year in the seconds. And then I, I, next year, I, uh, in 74, I started. Anyone look after you, Mike, when you got down the club? Any, uh, any of the characters take you under their wing? And I was a bit young, really. I yeah. was only 17 and uh, I uh, lived with a family called the Marnie family across the road who were very good to me and uh, they actually gave me the top of the garage, which is probably the coldest room in the whole house. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> it was like a cold room, you know, like it was, it was unbelievable. But uh, they were very nice to me and they did a great job. You now really you have pleased. an unusual nickname. Yeah. How did you get that? Well, I used to live with, a, I, after the Marnies moved down to Mornington, I lived with a guy called Leo Brooks, who's a very yeah. famous guy around the club. And yeah. uh, we used to have uh, cups of tea every Friday night. And, and the nickname, uh, of course, is Sellers. Sellers. Correct, Sellers. 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 And we were watching Peter Sellers' The Party. And, uh, <laughs> and all, it was my turn to go and get the cups of tea, and it was the only china he had. And I had five, six cups, and I was doing this, you know, like... <laughs> and I've just pulled the door with my foot, <laughs> and the whole lot went down, of course, so we had no cups, you know, so... <laughs> so it sort of stuck from there. That was about it. One and of the great movies, clumsy too, too, The Party with yeah. Peter Sellers, one oh, of the all-time great, movie. great movies. Yeah. What about some of the coaches you had uh, at Carlton? Because you would, you would have went through a few coaches when you first came down because John Nichols probably coached for a couple of years and then, of course, uh, Ian Thorogood yep. took over as coach and then Ian Stewart came for a short period of time. Yep. And, you know, was it, was, it was, it was <laughs> a period of turmoil for Carlton. I think we had more coaches than... Uh, or we had less presidents and more coaches, you know. I mean, we had... Uh, actually, I think we went through... We had seven or eight coaches in the, in the 13 years I was there, so... But... Look, you, you learn a lot off all of them, and I think everyone gave a little bit to uh, to, to mould you into something. And but I think David probably was the uh, the best that, that we came across in those times. Parkin. David Parkin. Yeah. Now you had a marvellous player with you, Brucey e. Dool. Did you ever speak to him? Not often. <laughs> <laughs> About as many times as he spoke to me, you know. But, yeah. Um, well, did he, he ever he speak good. to you? Oh, yeah. He said hello every now and then, and uh, he didn't have to. He was just sort of you could just feel he was okay. You know, it was sort of it was a or mental telepathy type thing, yeah. you know, how you going, Bruce? Just a bit of a nod, and that's all you needed, and it was fine. That was him. I saw him the other night, actually. went to Shane O'Sullivan's 50th birthday on Saturday night, and uh, 
and Bruce was there and he said three words. How you going? <laughs> what about, what about <laughs> the premierships, Mark? You played in three. Uh, yeah. Any standout out of the three grand final victories? Any any one you remember the most? Well, I think the first one's always a, a, a big one, Dougie. And uh, you know we were young and we had a young team and and Alex had taken over and he'd really worked us hard and made us very strong. And but then we backed up in uh, '81 and won that and we were we were sort of uh, down most of the game and. Uh, we got up in the last quarter and won, you know, 20 points down halfway through the third quarter. But the last one was mo mo most special against Richmond, and Kevin played that day. You're taking your time going back there. Where are you oh, going to settle down for a goal? Oh, I think I had six seconds. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, Look at this. But uh, I was a bit skinnier then. But uh, <laughs> the, the thing about uh, the Richmond game was that we got beaten heavily on the, uh, heavily on the uh, second semi-final. Mm. Uh, got beaten by eight goals and for us to win the grand final was just a great effort uh, we thought and uh, we had the streaker there we had everything that day it was a huge day and, uh, did you get close to the streaker no i was in the fourth pocket i was calling her come yeah. down what here, come down here. Name, <laughs> what was the name again he got helen domingo was her name. That's it, yeah. he got her phone number and her name don't worry about that john i got all that john i got all that. <laughs> what about some of the you played in a great year for the carlton football club and you mentioned before you know uh Cindy jackson was there when you came down and john nichols but you had alex jeslenko mike fitzpatrick Adrian Gallagher, Ken Hunter, Bruce Stuhl, mm. uh, Rod Ashman, Jeff South. I mean, it was it was a who's who of football. Yeah. Well, look, we, it's been a very special club, and and I suppose they're going through a tough time at the moment. But I tell you what, they've given their supporters a fair reward over the mm. years, and I would I wouldn't think that uh, the supporters should be too upset about uh, having a, a lean time at the moment because, I mean, they're leading the premierships uh, of uh, any club with with Essendon. They've won more games than any other club versus the opposition. So. There's no complaints had, I would think, by our supporters. Well, Mark, modern-day players now don't seem to have much of a, a social life. They can't seem to get out and enjoy themselves. Well, yeah. Certainly in our time, we certainly did that. Mm -hmm. In your time, did you ever get in trouble or ever fine. get a fine from the club? For, like, like we see guys now get fined? Well, I was surprised. I mean, inflation, I would have thought, would have taken over. <laughs> uh, they only get fined 5000 for wrestling, you know, and I got fined 5000 for having a drink, you know, with, with Val. That was Val in 1983, I think it was. And that's 20 years ago. So, how much would it be now? Oh, how would you get caught again? Something? Well, Caroline Wilson found us, and uh, <laughs> I don't know how she found us. We'd changed hotels four times. <laughs> so, uh, she tagged you. She followed did, did Val have yeah. baby shoes on, or did he lose one? Well, there's a bit of a story about that because I, I said to Val, I'm not going to ring up. I'm not ringing the club. He goes, Tranny. He goes, and I'd already rung. You know, I'd already rung up and said I was sick. Yeah. I was very sick, actually. But, uh, <laughs> and I said to Val, I said, I'm not going to ring. He said, yeah, bugger, I'm not ringing either. You know, so, so he didn't ring. And, uh, and then the next day, he said, I was up in Ballarat seeing my accountant. You know, like, oh, how long does that take? You know, that's <laughs> <laughs> so it was a pretty funny day. But uh, I mean, we actually spoke about it the other day. We had a reunion, our 81, 82 grand final reunion, which was magnificent, really. And, uh, and Val spoke about it again. And, he, and uh, Sandy Roberts asked him, would you do it again? And he said, oh. Every day of my life, mm. had a great time. <laughs> well, Val Perovic, of course, uh, came across from St Kilda. He was one of the one mm. of the great recruits, wasn't he, uh, to come to the Carlton Football Club? He's a magnificent a player. Yeah, magnificent player. Like he started off on the wing, but he ended up at centre half back. And I actually played on him before he came across, and we had a bit of fun against each other and all that sort of stuff. He's a very funny guy, mm. and uh, he had a lot of quirks about him. He didn't like training much. He was a really good athlete, and we had a list on his locker, all the things to uh, check before training, like hamstring, back. Achilles, <laughs> he had them all. There was nothing he didn't get, you know, that you couldn't see. All the ones you couldn't see, and uh, he didn't train much. He and he had a great moustache. Had a great moustache. Yeah, he had a great moustache, but he's that that Yugoslavian style, you know, or whatever it is, Croat or whatever it is. But uh, he's uh, he'll hate me for that because <laughs> I've got it wrong. <laughs> you played a lot of great footballers. We mentioned yeah. that kid before, but a lot of characters, you know, Jimmy Buckley, Kenny yeah. Sheldon, Percy Jones. Wayne Johnson. I mean, just these type of guys would have been just a lot of fun, or having them guys around the club as well. Well, you, you've got to make your own fun. Mm. I mean, one of the things that you are, you're in a team. The team thing's about having a lot of fun. And, and, and I mean, it doesn't matter where you're at, what football, you, you play church football or whatever. Mm. There's always yeah. characters in your team. And we were lucky enough to have a hell of a lot. And uh, in a day when we could actually, we used a bit of character and a bit of fun. And, and uh, today you can't do that. You know, you're not, they knock it out of you completely. So, you're uh, with St Kilda now. Are, yeah. there any, are there many characters down there in your team at the moment? It's in Kilda. Real personalities. We've got a lot of young kids. We do have a lot. Oh, Spider has got, got, <laughs> got a bit of personality. Spider's got a little bit. He tries to, eh? Spider's got a little bit of personality. Uh, Milne's got a, he's got plenty of cheek about him. Yeah. And uh, uh, look, it's, it's an amazing how you get young guys in and they actually evolve. 
in football and they, they start to take control and, uh, and, uh, and we'll see that in the next few years with St Kilda because we've got some magnificent young players. Mm. Mark, uh, stay with us on the cast because uh, coming up is, is a player who uh, finished playing AFL football before you came down from Sydney, so you probably didn't know a great deal about him, but he is one of the, the all-time greats for North Melbourne. Three times so close to winning the Brownlow medal, and he also was a champion ballroom dancer as well. So stick around for Grumpy Old Men when our next superstar will join us after the break. <laughs> 